stream is up and recording. All right, full screen this. Hey, uh, welcome in, guys. This is uh, Big Bear Berg. Um, we're going to be talking about Foxhole and the health of Foxhole today. I'm accompanied by my guest, uh, Veerd, here. Um, Veerd is a part of WLL, um, and I'm just going to let him take it from there. Uh, well, uh, hello, everyone. Um, as you heard, I am member of WLL. Well, actually, to be honest, I am a officer in WLL, uh, which you probably know Kronos is the leader of. Uh, well, I'm not happy to say this, but I am almost 40, somewhere like that. Uh, I've been playing games, uh, video games, uh, since I was... Hmm, what was that? Uh, somewhere around 13 years old. Uh, that was when actually uh, PC on its own uh, was not actually Pentium yet. It was still, uh, what was that? Uh, 457 or something like that. I'm not sure. So, yeah, I, that was when I actually met Winter Olympics game and it's been wild ride since then uh, i managed to get peak gaming experience during 90s when diablo was released along with panzer generals and everything else <laughs> so on and so forth red alert uh, age of empires uh, stronghold crusader and everything else Anyways, um, let's go back to the topic we are actually talking about now, and that is the Foxhole game. Uh, usually in Foxhole, I am covering two of five, actually four or five main aspects of the game, which is one is logistics from crafting gear to driving, delivering to the front, managing stockpiles and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, the other one is engineering or bunker building. Along with that uh, logistic part, the, what I missed is actually the facilities or player-built factories, which is basically production of upgraded versions of vehicles or production of specific uh, emplaced guns uh, or super tanks, Tempest cannons and so on and so forth. Back to you. Yeah, so um, he he didn't give it justice. If you ever need anything, he makes it. I mean, you know, it, he doesn't like to admit it, but he makes it all, man. Uh, he's great in logistics. He's great in facilities. I mean, anything you need, he's willing to help you. He's willing to do anything. Uh, appreciate that, Hydrate Panda. Um, so he's great um my name is big bear uh berg um i'm 24 i've been streaming foxhole for little more than eight months now maybe nine getting close there um and i am a multi-streamer but my main growing and love for games comes from foxhole um i've been pc gaming for seven years now uh before that i was a uh, console chad uh, I was on Xbox, um, played that for a really long time, uh, Rainbow Six Siege Master, got to Diamond once, really proud of that. Uh, that being said, um, the goal of this and why I have brought Veered here and why I'm starting this podcast is one hole that I think Foxhole really has is a way for players to communicate in a very... Um, modest, respectful tone and a way for us to talk to the devs without typing it i mean you know you can see my face you can see beards you can see my facial expressions you can see everything um i think when you type it there's a lot of disconnect that happens between humans and um that's that's the reason i i made the boneyard here uh, i've had a lot of support getting this ready <clears throat> thanks pig no be uh beard um but that's what we're really here for guys is to really just branch out talk about some stuff and really just kind of stop being blue versus green all the time and kind of come together at this point and make make teal you know um i want us to be able to talk to you guys and you to be able to talk to us and us to be able to talk to the devs in a place where 
there's not going to be the Reddit wars, guys. That's that I hate it. Um, so my goal is for this to really grow up and glow up to be um, a news information hub for Foxhole and um, a place for us to kind of meet in the middle and talk about some stuff. That being said, um, one of the questions I'm going to ask pretty much every one of my guests is um, what they would love to see changed in Foxhole. That's the biggest thing I think anyone ever talks about um, when it comes to balance or what, you know, everyone wants to, their voice to be heard. And uh, I'd love to hear Beards. Okay. Uh, in matter of changes, actually, I first, I am just going to stick with something that we are all suffering from, which is one small piece, well, not small, it's actually extremely simple piece of work that you have to do every day, every single day when you get in the game, if you have any bunker or facility or something that you've already built. That is the M-subs. You have to either make them or just simply distribute them. Honestly, at the moment, if uh, you, for example, have a facility that is usually in a region that is at least poor or very poor, uh, you are spending thousands upon thousands of uh, M-subs a day. You need approximately, so I can speak about WLL facilities, I can speak about facilities that I've seen. Usually those numbers are around 1,000 to 3,000 M-subs a day, uh, sorry, an hour which means that is approximately 24 to 60, 70, 80 uh, K a day. The problem that I have at the moment with that is basically the only way to transport those M-subs, you take a truck, fill up 1,000, uh, 1.5 K and drive it to the tunnel and then keep driving one same thing over and over until you fill up the tunnel to the required desired amount and then move up the next tunnel and so on and so forth. Uh, I would like that to be changed, for example, that you can pull M-subs from uh, material factory, but have them created in higher amounts. For example, create not to be 100 M-subs, but to be like 300, 500, something like that, to reduce just that amount of driving around. That's one thing I would like to be changed that will improve quality of life for both factions, actually, for all players. This will impact uh, everybody who is doing any sort of building. That's my first thing. Um, I'm going to just chime in a small little bit there. Um, you know, I think M-subs are a good thing. I think you shouldn't be able to just spam build and not take care of them. But what Veard's saying is right. It, it feels like to play the game correctly and build bunkers and stuff, it feels like you get a chore bestowed upon you for playing the game the correct way. And I, I can't argue with that statement at all. Like, M-subs, yeah, that I, I feel like that'd be a good change, honestly. I, I can't see a lot of faults with that um, on either side. Um, so, I mean, uh, look at look at the... From different perspective, uh, most of the people will take M-subs uh, as something that is most important for the facilities. But bunkers on specific locations can be built only if you have either two salvage mines, and then you keep, have to keep driving petrol to actually fuel those mines so you can produce enough salvage to produce enough M-subs, or you need salvage field. And that's when you can actually have the bunkers that actually can have storm cannons, intel centers, and so on and so forth. Basically, if you want to have any big uh, bunker, any big fortress, you need uh, nearby a reliable source of salvage. And actually, that is usually placed somewhere where you have in the same hex refinery, so you can at least get fuel as well. Yeah. I'm, I'm liking that too. I'm down with that. Um, one thing talking about like um, M subs though, and something that came to mind, and I, I don't know how to combat this, and I don't know if there is a way. Um, but one thing I could see a possible problem being is 
with the M subs being able to be taken in higher amounts, would you then want to start locking your M sub facilities? Because I mean, let's face it, you know, no one wants to address the big bag bear. <laughs> um, that being said though, you know, alts are a real thing. And if you have, you know, 10,000 M subs in there and they can pull out five crates of 500, I mean, is it going to really hurt you because it's just scrap? No. But is that a thing where you're going to want to start locking your web subs up because you're going to be worried a little gremlin's going to come? You know, those are things that, you know. That's, that's something else that is also on my list, which <clears throat> is, uh, you know that, for example, Materials Factory uh, by default produces CMATs and M subs without any upgrade. Then in order to produce more CMATs, uh, you have upgrade that is either smelter or metal press. Uh, one uses coke, the other one uses uh, uh, petrol. Mm -hmm. Why not introduce a new version of material factory, which is called, let's say, supply center or something like that, that will crank out M subs in higher amount. So technically, you can just keep farming field shove all of that into uh, material factories that are specialized for m sub production and whoever takes them that's not a problem also additionally i know that there are people that are dedicated only for salvaging and they are doing only salvaging nothing else basically absolutely nothing else we had mm -hmm. regiment on um, colonial side uh, osu that was only doing salvaging. They did not have a facility or anything special. They actually traded for, were actually, to be specific, mostly were accepting donation in form of materials to make uh, a rail line, to make basically the whole center where you can go with big train, with ships, whatever, to pick up salvage and take it away. I'm, I know that also wardens have such groups. I know there are a lot of people that are not tied to regiments that only do salvaging. WLL took, let's say took. Um, people uh, know of a group of people that is called uh, McDuck. They were working with us. They are currently playing as a wardens on this war. Uh, and they are actually... Uh, doing exactly that. They have small facility on salvage field and they are basically just cranking out them subs and doing salvaging. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's two ways to think, you know, I mean, especially with those types of groups, like they could more than likely just outproduce alts. But I mean, at the other end of it, it's like if we just pumped out, um, like I said, overproduce, those to where it, like it'd be a drop in the bucket yeah i mean that that'd be a pretty easy fix for it um and i think m subs um tie into a big part of the issue that i am kind of straining right now is um you know put this very broadly and i'll elaborate later um burnout is a real thing in this game it really hits a lot of people um differently um but i think what you're saying would really help a lot of burnout. Hey, welcome in cream pie. Um, you know, just that being said though, like I think just the M subs alone would help a little bit. Um, in that burnout, I think the burnout's a big problem. Um, and I think that what that idea that you said would, would really help. Like I said, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse, but, um, yeah. Uh, I agree with that for sure. Um, what else would you like to see change? Oh, basic, go ahead. Uh, sorry. The basic idea behind this is to actually, so uh, we are all playing game to have fun, to enjoy ourselves, so on and so forth. It's not fun or enjoyable experience to actually drive around from point A to point B like 20, 30 times to just distribute M subs that's not neither that's neither fun nor engaging so mm -hmm. for that reason i want to see it changed so that time is actually reduced to minimum that chore that you have that is necessary you just kick it out we all remember war 100 
and hammering out everything in case you forget to put CMATs in the tunnel or forget to fuel the power stations or generators that are producing G subs to actually keep everything alive. So for that reason, I would like this to be changed so that chore doesn't feel like a chore. Agreed. Okay. Another another proposition that I have is quite unlikely that's going to happen, but I want to throw it in the air. Um, allowing placement of player built structures over the trees. For example, you have trees somewhere. Let's say you have nice plain uh, field, grass here and there, couple of bushes, and you start building your facility or your bunker or whatever, and you see like lone tree or two trees at the same spot. Uh, I'm not sure if it's possible from the engine side, from game side, but considering that damaging uh, the ground also removes a tree in some way, there is a stump left over when it's, the ground, ground is devastated, but I'm guessing technically it's possible for that tree to be removed. So technically you can go there, place bunker or foundation on top of it. If that is possible, I would say, okay, allow that to be possible, but for each tree, that piece, whatever that piece is, should cost at least four M subs for each tree that is taking away from the map. So that would help both engineers. Yes. Oh, I was just saying. Um, I don't know if this is a hundred percent true. I've heard this rumor, but when Artie hits. Um, a ground. I know you said it creates a um, st stump, but I know that, um, or at least from what I've heard, is when they make the arty craters. Um, if that was on a position where a tree was, that completely removes the tree. From what I've heard, is like that arty crater hits, and those are at random. But if that arty crater hits in a spot where a tree is, that completely disables the spot of the tree, and then you could fill in that arty hole. So theoretically. I think you're yes. correct. So I think what either one or two ways to do this is be able to artificially do that, make an arty crater and dig up a big ass foxhole or be what you said, just have it be where you place the little rope triangle down. And, you know, it says, you know, when you get close to a, um, a edge point where it says, Hey, this will rapid decay. When you put that over a tree, it'll pop up a little prompt saying, this will double your M sub amount by X amount much for this square. And however many were in that yep. rope area would, um, would address that. But I think all in all, like I think people would pay the bigger price to have a more solid structure because let's face it, trees and obstacles and all this stuff, it, it sometimes creates points or town halls to not be defendable just because there's literally a tree there that partisans and or if it's getting pushed by a big group can get exploited. And it's not even the defender's fault that they didn't want to put something there. It's the trees are literally stopping us from being able to defend certain like Umbra Wildwood, like, huh? You know what I mean? Like it, it, that place alone, you know, some places are just not defendable um, due to trees. And I think colonials and wardens um, very much feel the same on, on this topic. Um, that being said, talking about just trees, what about um, in-game um, structures that are already placed like... Um, you know, the big oil tankers that are on, um, I know where we were fighting up north last war, there were three fuel silos. How would we go about addressing stuff like that? Or do we just, that's, that is the way the map is laid. I would, uh, honestly, again, this is more a question for the developers, but if it's possible, um, there are hay bales, there are hay stacks, mm -hmm. vehicles, like tractors here and there random artifacts that are making the world actually interesting you see that somebody actually lived there did something then the war came and they 
actually vacate the premises, which is completely understandable. It makes place actually feel more alive. However, uh, they are blocking stuff that you want to place down. I wanted, for example, in uh, what was that? Westgate, uh, Barony, no, not, not Barony Ranch. Um, oh my God, I cannot recall the name. Uh, Rancher's Fest. Mm. Rancher's Fest has both hay bales and hay stacks that prevent you from building uh, bunkers or placing absolutely anything near them, not even on them, near them, because they have big hitboxes. I would apply basically the same logic, just increase the m sub consumption for some number. If it has to be uh, specifically, um, oh my God, it has, if it has to be specific modifier for each type, I would say, okay, make it a specific, specific modifier. If it's a bunker, once it's destroyed, dehusked, pop back that uh, thing that was there. However, if it is, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, if it is a facility, the moment the foundation is destroyed, pop back the thing that was there. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, speaking of this, this brought a whole new conversation of mine that I have a change for. Um, but that being said, like, I love the fact that they have these artifacts in game and like the old, like, I know it's kind of hinted at and joked at that the planes are in, um, you know, and that might be a thing one day and like that stuff's really cool and lore accurate. Like I love that. But when it starts affecting the gameplay, I agree. And maybe this isn't even possible from the devs, but this is something again, this podcast is for. I love that idea is at least expressing like, Hey, this is something that needs to be changed. You know, like I definitely agree with that. Um, that being said, another thing, <sighs> hot well, topic, not specifically changed, at least discussed or reviewed if it's possible. Mm -hmm. And if it is possible, how much effort will that be? Um, saying that, um, you know, you brought something to my mind that kind of hit home with me, and it was like, you know how we have all these town halls and stuff like that, and these, sometimes there's barns and stuff, but where is the house in the middle of the field that owned that farm, you know? I would like to see more, um, and I know this is kind of like, you want more stuff in there to block us, but, you know, I do want to have more, um... I want to have more like engagement and re like not realism, but more of a like, I want the old white house out in the middle of the field. You know what I'm saying? And like, not something that is big or something to fight for, but maybe something that, you know, we could go kind of make an objective or something silly like that. Like I, you know, we have like what two cities, Jade Cove and, I don't even know another city in the map, like Deadlands, like Abandoned uh, Ward. To be, uh, to be perfectly honest, Heartlands, uh, Umbral Wildwood, uh, and I'm not sure about third territory that I know specifically where exactly in the Heartlands, in the middle of the field where those unkillable pumpkin fields are, mm -hmm. uh, there is actually a shed. There is a shed. Mm -hmm. uh, in Umbral Wildwood, there is a house that is built out of stone. And I'm not sure about third location. I think it was, again, Westgate. Westgate. Uh, there is a house, but with a caved-in roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I, I, yes, I would love to see more outside of that. Of, outside of everything. Yeah. See, and that's, that's really cool. I would just... Maybe just a little sprinkle more of those in there. You know, I just... I think they're really cool. Um, Lockmore, I love that Ducky's in here. He loves finding stupid, silly stuff like that. Lockmore has one. It has a farmhouse. But, you know, I just, this is just a side note, not anything big. But, you know, since we are kind of speaking to the mass populace out of this and the devs, you know, maybe just add a little bit more that there were people here before we came, before the fight really teed off. Oh, I'm sure you love that house, pig. Um, 
that being said, I, I fully agree with the building. Um, I am a builder on the front a lot of the times, and I can't stress to you enough how much I hate when you're trying to build something and you either have to try 40 times and the perfect 3 by one can fit in, which, let's be honest, 3 by ones aren't that great anyway, but you could barely fit that 3 by one in there. And then it can't connect because of another hay bale. And it's like, you just want to hit your keyboard, man. It's like, I just want to build, even if it's something to stop, like a small group from getting in and stealing stuff. That's, that's big stuff. So let me, uh, let me just address one more thing when we, when we are talking about building or bunker building specifically. Uh, one thing that I'm extremely, let's not, I, I don't want to say annoyed, but more like uh, frustrated from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, there are um, underground artifacts, uh, like let's say you are near a river and you have that huge cliff that has a rock face and so on and so forth. And when you try to build it, you start, uh, you use a square, start placing it, and then you're slowly backing up from the riverside. And at some point you get the, let's call it yellow square that you can place. However, there are those artifacts appearing on the middle of the plain grass fields. For example, Red River, Parish, the hill that is towards the ash fields, but on the side that's actually far away, uh, you are on basically level ground you are higher a lot higher than anything else than rivers and everything you have cliff that is way over there yet ground is completely level and there are places where you cannot place anything at all basically you cannot build not foundation or nothing absolutely nothing mm -hmm. yeah the buildable ground I've terrain checked with other people as well yeah I check with other people if it is, again, uh, there are sometimes, uh, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm guessing it's uh, graphic card issues. Uh, some things in game like boxes or stuff like that, so small uh, pieces cannot be visible to everyone. Some people see them, some people don't. However, I checked with other people, there is absolutely nothing there. It's plain ground, plain grass field that actually has something underneath it preventing anything to be built. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that should be somehow caught on, listed, and actually given to the developers so they can review if there are actually underground rocks that are preventing that, so they can be at least cut down a bit so people can actually build stuff. Yeah, um, just, you know, kind of beating on the building stuff. I mean... When there's a hill that doesn't even have, like, a 4%, like, <laughs> incline, you know, like, the smallest incline, and you wiggle the, the box around in circles to get the one little build, and it's like, it doesn't fit still, it's like, dude, like, you're digging a six-foot trench in the ground through this dirt, like, why does it matter if it's a little higher, you know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> I, maybe just not make everything uh, flat. Me but you know at least let us build into hills a little bit more aggressively and or um elevation changes between bunker to bunker you know what i mean yep i completely understand you for example um i'm gonna give you specifics i was actually the one who built that uh, huge defensive wall in heartlands from um, uh, Barony Ranch to uh, Diplo uh, three wars ago that's war 107 I was the one who actually built that huge defensive wall along the borderline with uh, what's on the left Deadlands? No, it's not Deadlands oh my god, I keep forgetting uh, top left side anyways I was the one who built it the problem with that terrain it's actually that, I mean, with reason, it's called a roll cage. It's basically rolling hills. 
the problem is actually how to place stuff so you can actually keep building connected pieces. I had pieces that are 26, 32 uh, pieces big, huge meta pieces Holy that cow. could survive. And terrain is actually hill, rolling hills all the time. It's doable. It takes time, true, but it's doable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, um, my thing also is like, it's not the vets that I'm worried about building weird. It's not me or you that know how to finagle things. And it's the person who, it's the private that joins, sees a, a general digging and building, and he wants to help, and he's asking questions, and then he goes off to try to build his own little thing, and he's stuck in this plethora of, how do I build on a hill? How do I connect this piece? How do I because there are methods to it like even with the train lines like there's a spill off train line that goes this way and that allows you to bend it even farther this way and it's like you learn these things from time but it's like they got to have an ease of access and that being said on top of it just to speak of it devs or add, a, add a tutorial place. please add a tutorial for the love of god please add a tutorial please Three by ones is all we need to teach him, baby. That's it. W sup? Come on, bro. Please. Sorry, that's a little rant. Um, go ahead. I saw you laugh at that no, too. No, I think everyone not, feels I mean, that though. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, how can you make a tutorial for a game that effectively to learn how to play, you are required to spend at least 100 hours because of how many different aspects there are and how complex they are. That's one of the problems that I don't know how to answer and I am actually, which I forgot to mention, I am actually a software engineer so I don't know how to answer on that at all. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's not something that like, I know I'm sitting here just like an idiot saying, just do it, it's easy. Like there's time and stuff into it, but I'm not asking for them to have an elaborate, like, massive thing. But, you know, the things that I, I think most vets want in the tutorial is I, I think they want, you know, before you get in the game, show them how to go up to a store depot, pull shirts from public, drive it to bunker, deposit in the bunker, one. Understanding that and teach them, like, if there's 500 shirts in a bunker, do not bring any more shirts and explain to them if that bunker gets lost, it's just wasted. Explain these things to newer players and oh, just with that being said, you get to my next point. <laughs> well, and okay, so we're diving in this. Um, that being said, like also like they do a decent job, at, like you know, pull this gun, pull this ammo, shoot. Like that, that stuff's not. But what really makes the difference in Foxhole, um, in my opinion, is teaching players how to do Logi effectively, listening to the... <laughs> uh, figuring out who is trying to actually lead an effective push versus who being a troll, which is very hard on the front sometimes. Um, but also just playing for the team. Like, I, I wish they would kind of go with the whole Helldivers thing, which I know it's PvE, that's a whole other thing, but, you know, like, kind of have, like, a, you know, I, I'll i be the first one to say, like, everyone knows my song, dude. Mammon in the moonlight. You know, everyone knows, like, when I'm trying to get Mammon rushes together. When someone's, like, trying to get the troops rallied up, you know, try to get that team camaraderie. You know, try to, like, you are on the Colonial Legion. You know, like, help your brother. Try to, you know, kind of make it a LARP type thing. But truthfully, teach them not to be a little shithead. You know, like, oh, I know better. Fuck you. Like, yeah, I'm going to do my own thing. And You know, listening to vets is hard in this game as it is because a lot of vets are douchebags. Let's face it. But at that other half, they're the only ones that know the experience. And if people would learn how to do the tutorial correctly or get a tutorial on basics and say, okay, this guy is trying to do this. At least I know, like just grab a shovel and help or just, it's a tough balance to dive between listening to a vet and knowing how to do something on your own. Vets are always going to know how to do it better, 
but I wish they would at least have some basic knowledge. If they don't want to listen to vets, like at least how to build three by ones, the current like proper way. Don't put a 26 piece of just a solid brick across. You know, I have a video of a dude putting literally 28 bricks in a box and he put rifles like a checkerboard. And like, I was like, dude, um, I have a screenshot of some person. I'm not sure who it was. Uh, sorry. One second. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. I have a screenshot of a person. I'm not sure who it was, but the dude made a let's call it defensive line that was tier two 147 pieces and <laughs> it died to a random partisan who threw one memon at it <laughs> because that actually had one hp oh baby that's a uh... That's a value mammon rush right there, big dog. I'll tell you what. Um, you know, like I said, I anyways, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse. We can move on, but yeah. you know, just a tutorial and really just try to help builders. I mean, I think that's what the moral of our message is here. Help builders because God bless if it doesn't suck when you have to put twenty hours into a building just for it to get artied and shit on the next day. Excuse my French, but that sucks. Like, help builders, please, devs. Just give us some love. Um, I don't have problem with... I mean, I never had any problems with partisans in a sense that I got frustrated, angry, or disappointed, or whatever, when partisans managed to get into my facility or bunker or whatever and destroyed something of value. I mean, I've lost up to this point in last 10 wars i lost three or four tempest cannons because of the partisans they managed to find a way to get in and deal the damage and destroy the thing and i'm perfectly fine with that i don't have problem with that however what i have problem with is basically uh, having to log in and spend every day at least three or four hours on basically m sub chore to just keep the facility or bunker alive just so it doesn't rot away yeah uh, for bunker it's it's okay it takes longer time longer period of time because it's usually concrete defense that takes a lot of time to actually decay but for facilities each facility every facility in 99 percent of the cases has a lot of stuff in it each building has a lot of stuff in it and you don't want to them to rot away usually they rot in 24 hours so basically if you for some reason don't log in today and you didn't stock your m sub tunnels quite nicely to hold out for a while well tough luck anyways let's proceed further on yep. uh my next thing you actually started mentioning that uh, earlier uh overstocking bunkers uh, I have a huge problem with that because uh, there are a lot of new people that are joining the game, which is perfect. That's nice to see new faces, new people. That's awesome. Uh, one of the big downside uh, of, let's call it, let's let's mm. just be honest. Uh, one of the big downsides of the game, vets don't trust new players. They are not sure if they are actually valid new players or they are old or whatever. Now, I never suspect alting or anything, but, and I always try to help people and teach them how to do stuff, how to do whatever. Uh, I had a person who bought the game. We started doing Logi in Red River, and I told him, hey, just so you know, you are still very much low level. You are private. Basically, you are the beginner of beginning. Uh, people are not going to trust you until you get your rank at at least four or five levels up people will be suspicious of what you are doing so the best way to actually farm that rank is to do frontline 
or basically from backline, drive the delivery to front hex, the, deliver stuff in the depot, and come back and keep doing that on and on. That's the easiest way to farm commands. Commands are the thing that will rise your rank. That way, you will actually proceed faster, and it will actually help you so people can trust you. Other option is to do almost the same thing, which is take the stuff that you brought to the storage depot or a seaport and take regular logic truck and drive that to the frontline bunker. Now, the problem that I have is that usually new players end up on the second uh, situation where they are doing frontline delivery. And everybody in their mother knows that people who are fighting on the front want to see uh, when somebody uh, I mean, want to see. They commend people when they bring shirts, bomber stones, and B mats. They will always commend people who bring that, and which is exactly the reason why you can overstock bunkers with those items. For that reason, I would like to give a proposal that is a bit in detail. Uh, basically, limit uh, number of items and quantity of items uh, that you can have in the bunker. For example, if it's tier one bunker, you can have up to 200 rifles, 600 clips of ammo, uh, I don't know, 150 shirts, uh, 500 uh, artillery uh, grenades or uh, artillery rounds, sorry, uh, certain amount of every item, that way, you will actually prevent people from overstocking frontline bunkers. If it's tier 2, increase that by, let's say, double. If it's tier 3, increase it by four times compared to tier 1 bunker. Yeah, I mean, um, I think the numbers you could get, you know, slid, you know, on a slider. Um, I can see, you know, um, I, I don't see a problem with that as long as the numbers were reasonable. I wouldn't want to see, like, you know, necessarily, like, only 150 shirts. I know that's, you know, still a big number, but it's, like, a healthy amount of shirts in any bunker on an active front line to a lot of people is different. You know, someone like me that does mammon rushes, I want to see 500. Someone that's just doing basic logic rifle, yeah, but... you know, it, it all just depends. Like, it, and you won't need as many shirts late game. As you will early game, but in early game, when you're rushing 60 people per, like, push, I mean, you're going to have to have shirts on standby close to not burn yourself, and that would also limit how much you can progress via, like, Mammon Rush. That would hurt early game. You know, so like I said, as long as there's a slider on how that could be, I could totally get behind that, because I don't want to see a thousand shirts in there. But I also don't want to have 150 rush 40 people, and then you know what I'm saying. Then you're you're already down really low. Plus, all the guys that aren't rushing with you, they're spawn. You know, there's a big give and take with that. I agree. But I agree. But have you paid attention to one other thing? Uh, tier one bunker, which is the provisional garrison, you get in about 15 to 30 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. Tier two which is small garrison, you get in about 24 hours. But if there is higher activity, those actually timers speed up quite a lot, meaning that if you are on the active front line and people are dying like crazy, like Mammon Rushes and other stuff, you will actually, I did see this, you will get small garrison in less than 12 hours. Mm, yeah. So technically you will get that tier two and you will get that a lot faster so you can upgrade it and then have increased capacity for items yeah and like i said i fully agree with the idea i just the the sliders i think would have to be balanced like strategically from people who really know like you know obviously and i know hey what's up phoenix um and i know it's kind of um um it'd be a touchy Hello? My thing's like... Okay, there we go. Uh, it'd be a kind of touchy-feely thing for a minute. Um, but I think that's a great idea, and I think that would really limit 
um the spam of people just trying to farm commends just to bring Lodgy up too. Um, I think that would really help with a lot of small issues um, with that. I, um, cause I, I mean, all I can think about is like a venom right now, <laughs> not having over like 20 venoms, you know, like that's, that would be like, thank God we're not wasting venoms on a mass. Oh, 90 venoms. I'll just go run it out in the middle of a field, whatever. Like, Mother, you are not charging those R mats, dog. Like you don't understand, bro. Like those are not cheap. Please. Oh, we have a hundred Linares. Yeah. Fuck it. I'll just leave it out there. I'll just drop. It. Mother, you know how long that t t took me took me to get this up here. Come on now, Cutler, all that stuff. Yeah, hundred percent. Both sides, I think. And I think. I think the wardens are kind of doing that better than the collies because when we like take a collie bunker or a warden, excuse me, a warden bunker, there's hardly shit left in there. Via when they take some of our stuff, you're like, cha ching! Like, yeah, I mean, that would 100%. It'd be more of a benefit, but I think it'd be for one side right now, but I think that would help total haystone. I think that would help as an entire um, worldwide. That would be a benefit, you know. Yep, and also additional thing uh, that can be introduced, for example, is a retrieval of items from the bunker back in form of a crates. For example, you have a tier three bunker, you have huge fortress that was under siege, was under siege, then enemy got pushed back. Mm. They are, let's say, one hex away. You can take stuff from that bunker. You don't have to go to the seaport or anything. You can pull stuff in form of crate from the bunker to deliver it to the push bunker. Okay, weird. I love that idea, first off. But now that we're talking about crates, we've talked about everything that you've wanted in, and this is something I've really wanted in for a long time. One big thing Bone does every war, you can ask any of my boys, is mortars. And I'm not meaning to cut you off. If you have anything else to say about that, I thought you were kind of done. I thought that was a great idea as well. Limit how much people can put into bunkers. Check. I think that's helpful for, for the whole game. Now, that being said, I want to see a change to the mortars. I think they're completely um, inefficient um, in the fact of, like, you have to bring shit up via um, hauler truck. You know, you have to bring 15 mortars up in a truck and it's like, dude, please just let me take a crate of mortars, hunk that shit on my shoulder and then like put it down as an emplacement. Like, you know how you press V to put down a tripod and it, it places it down. Let me do that with a mortar crate of 20 mortars and let me just use that crate as an actual crate. Now, the reason I say that is when you bring up a hauler full of mortars forward, yeah, that's a big risk because if that thing dies, you're not just losing 15 mortars anymore. You're losing, what's well, 20 by 15? I'm horrible at math. 300. You'd be losing 300 mortars. But on the other half, I think that it's really silly that we can only do 15 cadence of a mortar when we can do thousands upon thousands upon thousands of 120 shells and thousands upon thousands upon thousands of 150 this is essentially our tier two arty that's our tier two that's our arty until we get 120 and here's the other thing this is something else i would want i would want mortars to be able to be placed on a tripod and that's the way they were shot now I don't want to be able to carry like the personal mortar tube anymore. I think that mortar would be a, you place it on the tripod, but with that you would get a, um, kind of like an ISG or an infantry support weapon, like a Lamentum. You could have a loader come full of mammons from that crate or full of mortars with that crate come to the side. And I kind of stole this from hell divers, but be a loader for the mortar. And that way you have a um, uh, actual mortar team and stop making it one man mortar. Cause I, it, it breaks my immersion. Every time I see a little private come up with a mortar, a, 
a pair of binos, shoot, binos in. Okay, pulls his mortar tube back out. Boom. Like, that's just, it's it's not immersive. It's not, like, it doesn't make sense to me. I would like to be able to set down a tripod, one man with a tripod, one man with a mortar, and then have a loader and a gunner. I think, and be able to have a faster fire rate because it's two men. So instead of, boom, boom, you could do, like, with the finesca, you put four mortars in, which I know you couldn't put four mortars in in a tube realistically, but essentially you load it up with four, boom, boom, like the finesca, boom, 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 and then he takes you a long for sure, you know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato, whatever. <laughs> I also called the Daskus the wrong name the other way, the Dacus Dasket, you know what I mean? It's, but you know, I would like to see more team gameplay out of those those type of when i think of a mortar team i think of a three-man team whether you were on any front in any world war one or two it was a multi-man team even if you had the little 80 like the little 60 mil mortar the baby one they popped out a spring tripod and just thumped out the little guy you know what i mean like i would like to see more team aspect in the mortars but if they were placed on tripods alone and weren't movable, my recommendation would also be bump them from 80 meters to 100. And that also clears out one more thing because now you have mortars go from 50 meters to 100 and you have 120 go from 100 to, in Warden's case, 300 and Collie's case, 250. And then you have um, the the... 150s go from uh i i don't know what the minimum distance is but i think their tops are 350 you know what i mean so you're layering out the artillery range from 50 to essentially 350 making each state more um you'd have each range have an efficient gun for its if you know what I'm saying? Now, I think that would be beneficial yeah, for yeah. both teams. I, and in all honesty, I think mortars should be more of a a used item. Because, I, I mean, in all honesty, after 120s come out, like, mortars are almost kind of a meme unless you're in the mortar half track or the mortar divot. And they're just for support. To be, to be perfectly honest, that goes for every alt- artillery piece. The moment you have 120s, mortars are forgotten about. The moment you have 150s, yep. 120s are forgotten about. The moment you have 150s, a rocket artillery is forgotten unless it's fire. Nobody uses explosives anymore. They are using it basically only in first couple of days until uh, Hades are actually unlocked or in Warden case, the... Uh, tank with tubes on the side I can't recall the name of it uh, but rocket yeah. artillery is forgotten if it's explosive if it's fire then it's used because again fire it's very good well but and with a fire truck is forgotten completely when you have a fire truck too it's like fire Sorry. when you have a fire truck near it it's like fire is not even that great if you have a quick QRF with a ambulance like the the water truck or whatever I mean, it's good, and don't get me wrong. Like, I, I know it still does damage over an array of area, and you can't do it instantly. But what I am saying is I'm agreeing with you. I think the HE should have a bigger purpose. And I think for both sides, I think HE MLRS is very weak right now. I mean, I can't tell you how many ops we did um, even last war. I mean, we were in the north, and, I mean, we were we had the rocket tankettes. We had um, the Katushkas, like, we were sending thousands of rockets a day, and super effective. And I'll tell you, our favorite were the rocket tank cats catching shit on fire. But every time we set the Katushkas, it was like, they were good, but I could have done... I could have done just two more rocket tank cats and felt better about it, you know what I mean? Like, the Katushkas... When I mean Katushkas, yep. HE rockets, I think as a whole... 
Now, here's the thing, though. They own the wardens only get one vehicle to shoot the HE rock of out of rocket HE out of, which is their gesture. They don't get any other platform to shoot the HE rocket. That would almost be a Kali buff, but at the other half of it, we only get one platform to shoot the fire rockets out of, and that's only nine with the rocket tankette. So it's like. I don't know if I want to get into this debate right now about 120, but no, we're not. No, no, no. no, no. Let's not get. Yeah, we're just not going to do it. So, (laughs) also, I think when you set a howitzer on fire, it should stop shooting when you're half a hex away. I have a VOD I need to pull up. Riptider caught a howitzer on fire in the rocket tank at. He was driving his little ass away. This is up in Basin Home. And he caught um, Howitzer on fire across the bridge. And he was already almost back into um, reaching trail. And it was still boom, boom, boom. I mean, it was pounding him, dude. He's like, I can't get away. Stop. He was tracked. Yep. Uh, it was, that's just a funny thing. But Yep. Basically, uh, basically each time it, it triggers at least one damage, mm-hmm. Howitzer will return fire. So, yeah, that's understandable. Yeah, fire is, uh, don't shoot fucking ro- howitzers with rockets, gentlemen. Rule of the wise. Riptider figured out real quick. Not, not true. There is a way. I'm not going to say it. You can get, uh, you can do it easily and get away with it. I'm not going to say it. I know. He'll do way. it off stream, guys. He'll tell me after. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, the mortar change idea. I I think. Anyways, what do you what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I agree actually that you can be loader for the mortar, and that would, uh, let's say, increase the fire rate by sixty percent approximately. Mm-hmm. So you can actually do it faster. To be honest, that's extremely realistic, as you mentioned, not just World War One. I mean, U.S. Army uses mortars even today because mm-hmm. it's extremely easy to set them up. It's extremely easy to fire them. They are foolproof because you don't actually have to do a lot around it. You have one tube, one guy who is directing the tube, second the guy who is just throwing things in, and that's it. So it's extremely easy. It's extremely simple. With that being said, yes, your proposition to actually have another guy who is loader available to actually speed things up. Yeah, that's perfect idea. If you're a single guy and you are firing, yeah, you would have the rate of fire as it is at the moment in the game. But if you have one more person who is willing to actually shove uh, um, mortars in the tube, that should go a lot faster. Now, on the other point uh, related to ammo, I think it should be allowed. I'm not sure how, but I think it should be allowed for mortars to be on the pallet. Because uh, I don't know any other um, way to unpack uh, and temporarily store mortars unless you drop them on the ground in form of a box because everything else is stored either on a pallet or you have to drive it in a truck. Well, so it kind of goes back to my thing of, you know, this would be a whole new engineering idea in and of of itself. And I think this would be for, yeah, this would be, um, and I know it's a lot ask of the devs. And this is, again, I don't even know if it's possible, but it's an idea that I had. And where I get this inspiration from is it's a show called The Pacific. And there's a there's a point in that movie where um, Eugene Sledge, um, he was told to go grab a crate of mortars. And it's literally a stack of mortar crates um, covered by a jacket. And it's very inefficient to do the box method where you hammer out a box, put them in... Uh, it's just another inventory slot that it's like it's it doesn't even help. You can't 
unpack crates from that. You can't do anything from the box. So that's why I'm saying, like, from the actual crated thing you would pick up from the MPF, be able to set that down as a... You know when a, when a vehicle dies, it drops a drop box? Have essentially a drop box that would have an extended timer. Like, that drop box of a mortar timer would have... You know, I, and I, again, I don't know how this would all be done... Um, this is just spitballing, but I want a longevity platform other because it wouldn't be realistic to put mortars on a pallet either. You're not going to pallet a hundred. I mean, how many mortars would you even have on that? It'd be more than 120. It'd have to be. I mean, you could do 120, but that'd be the look really weird on a pallet. You know, that would be a very yeah, inefficient. Again. I, again, it, it, yeah, again, whoever I'm they want to tackle giving... it. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm just throwing a proposal because pellets already are used to uncrate uh, artillery shells or other materials like, uh, what's it, what are they called, metal beams. Mm -hmm. uh, you can submit a crate onto a pellet. It will unpack and show you the items themselves. That's why I gave the proposal of actually using pellets. Or... You can use a um, small train flat car. That's also another option. It's smaller. It makes more sense to use that than a pallet, which is huge for mortars at least. And But honestly, I don't want to put additional work uh, to devs to actually have them work and make new stuff just so they can appropriate all the ideas. Uh, let's work with the stuff we already have. I agree, pellet is not ideal solution. Pellets are not for mortars. You cannot pack in whatever uh, world, you cannot uh, use pellets to unpack mortars. Did you see what Goob just put uh, in? But small, yep, yep. That's the actually thing. Trailer should be viable option on the that other hand. That would be, but you'd have to have the trailer come out earlier, but that would actually be a very solid solution because that wouldn't be unrealistic either to have mortars come in via truck on the back of a trailer. You know, that that actually could be an answer that, you know, maybe that, you know, uh, the pallet idea, again, is not a bad idea. It would look awkward, but in and of a sense, it doesn't have to look good to work good, you know. So, yeah, I, I mean, that uh, definitely... I just think mortars should be more utilized. I don't think people understand how good mortars are at actually killing things. <laughs> um, that being said, underutilized, Bone loves them. I love them. It's kind of a personal ask, but also I think I've been I've been mortar spammed. I, I was in a bunker that 82DK pumped out like 12 guys dumping HE mortars. We had like 16 guys repairing and couldn't outdo it. Like, mortars in a controlled environment, like, pounding something, extremely effective. Extremely effective. So, that being said, um, I, I, I really like that idea. I really do. Um, that was just one of my ideas that I had down. That's one of my only ones. Now that you actually mentioned something that is underutilized, I have two things for you. One thing is engineer uniform, which honestly I have huge problem with. Engineer uniform uh, gives you reduced weight for refined materials, which are B-mets, E-mets, and R-mets, and that's all. You don't get anything else from it i think it should be changed to allow you at least something more and actually be better uh, at stuff that it does than for example tanker uniform because at the moment people who want to do engineering uh, they don't have any benefit uh, than tankers so what I would suggest is, for example, allow engineer uniform to hold 200 BMATs instead of 100, 
and not be encumbered. And that's it. But you don't have the tanker bonus where you have stacking gas masks. That will allow you to actually get more survivability and also bunker builders will be able to take more BMATs with themselves with them. Yeah, um I mean yeah uh, sorry uh, so technically my idea my idea was uh, allow uh, bmats my full idea sorry would be allow bmats to be stacked uh, to two 200 reduced weight on bmats reduced weight on diesel reduced weight on shovel and concrete yeah i think what would be really cool too is you know how like tanks now have a specific slot for um uh like 12 7 40 mil or whatever what i think would be really cool is if when you have the engineer uniform on where the knife and um where the knife slot is maybe have that be a heavy tool slot where it could go to sledgehammer or shovel and it would take that slot up with a weight reduction as well like you'd lose your bayonet but you could also have a heavy slot in that so you could have like something like that i mean i don't know how you'd want to balance that out but maybe essentially what i'm asking is like make where the bayonet go with the engineer uniform be a tool belt selection or a tool belt option that you could quick swap to or whatever and then um like if you have your hammer you left click on the sledgehammer slot or whatever and it would swap the hammer and the sledgehammer. It would just swap those off set, whatever. And then you could like drag that tool out for another tool or whatever. But that way you always have two tools on you, whatever you're doing. Um, and there would be like no weight reduction on you whatsoever. It'd be your tool belt. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> but primarily I want to see what I want to see is actually engineer uniform be actually utilized because at the moment you don't have a reason once tanker uniforms are teched you don't have a single reason to take engineer uniform instead of tanker uniform because tanker uniform gives you gas masks that are actually stacking and they are automatically replaced when they run out and uh, bonus for BMATs is actually absolutely the same you can have 99 BMATs and full gear for tanking in tanker uniform. But if you use the same thing on engineer uniform, you actually have more inventory slots used up. Yeah. Um, so, to be honest, uh, I don't have a specific time to end this, but uh, we're, we're on question one still on... Um, six questions uh, <laughs> and this is just meant to be whatever you know um but just talk about it. and i i've been perfectly happy with this but um and i, I actually kind of want to keep going on this but we do have four more questions uh so maybe not wrap it up but feel free to interrupt whenever you want no you're, you're good i was just gonna um go on to um those are some changes you'd want to see what i want to know from you now is how do you see foxhole as a whole right now the health how do you see foxhole in its true state as you sit right now Okay, that's a bit of a tricky question because at the moment I uh, really like some aspects of the game. On the other side, some aspects of the game feel like basically work or obligation or whatever you want to call it. If you dedicate your time to build a facility or build bunker and build something uh, to produce one thing or the other or defend location you are bound until the warp has been pushed far away from you or until you decide to give up you are bound to spend time maintaining and 
running that place. So again, returning to first thing that we talked about, which is msubs, uh, it's kind of a frustrating, boring job that you have to do. Uh, apart from that, um, I actually enjoy everything else. Okay, some aspects can be frustrating, like bunker building on locations, some specific locations with a lot of obstacles and so on and so forth. But that's story for another time. Um, in general, um, I don't know if there is actually a way to improve community and cooperation that devs can somehow help with. Um, one of the problems that I have since I'm mostly doing, as I said, either bunker building or facilities. Um, if you do facilities, everyone in basically that hex and surrounding two hexes wants to make something of their own. That's okay. They want to make stuff. But the problem is they want to make absolutely everything on their own. And if you tell them, hey, I'm going to give you stuff, they don't care, they want to make it. And they make facility, which then rots away in less than 10 days, and you have empty slots to do whatever you want, but you already changed how your facility will look, or bunker, or whatever, because somebody was there. Sorry, I just got a... Uh... I, that seems very sketchy on my Twitch. Um, <laughs> uh, that being said, um, I guess what I, what I should have asked is, I, I think we, okay, let me address something first. I think one thing is, I think the biggest thing devs need to address at this moment in time is burnout and cooperation via people. Um, how they do that, there's many ways they can do that, and it's all opinionative, and it's definitely direct of what they want to do with their game, but we are all aware of the issue going on right now, and that's facility burnout and longevity burnout and not enough breaks or any other side objectives other than take point, kill point, defend point. I, I love the game. Well, to be perfectly... Go ahead. Uh, sorry, just to quickly interrupt. Um, as I said, the burnout is actually not that hard on people that are doing, doing mostly frontline. So if you are infantryman or a tanker or whatever, uh, you basically spawn on X location, pick up a gun, pick up tank, whatever, and go fight until you are satisfied with dying and you log off. That's your biggest obligation. That's why you're there. But if you're a facility player or bunker builder or whatever, you basically have everyday obligation to do stuff. Sorry. Continue. Uh, no, I mean, you're 100% right. And I think it even goes farther than um, the Lodgeman and Regiman at this point. I think that there are big clans and clan leaders that feel an actual obligation that they don't hop on the game like they get to blame for like a, a lot of stuff and like these regiments that are big, like they're expected to do these massive things and expected to make massive plays. And it's like, you know, I love this game, but I'm telling you right now, like when Tarkov wipes, my boys know I'm going to get my head eyes going on, baby. I'm going to get Tarkov baby. Like it's happening. You know, I love Foxhole. I stream it the most out of any game. But the, I get burned out, dude. Like, if especially if I plan an op and I get my ass beat, like, there's nothing more demoralizing than that. And then to hop on and be like, all right, boys, saddle up again. We're going again. Like, that sucks. Um, I definitely – I have to take breaks from day to day sometimes. Um, that being said, like, I feel an obligation to hop on and play with my guys. Like, I actually feel like it's something that I have to do. That's not good. This is a video game, you know? I mean, it's a community-based video game, and it's an MMO. You're going to spend more time in these games. It's, it's, it's... Yeah, I don't I think 48 hours... That's also... Oh, 
Sorry. No, you're fine. Uh, you actually released push to talk and uh, I'm guessing you probably people on the stream actually were able to hear you, but I could not. Oh, you I did. thought you stopped uh, I was talking breathing. because your face was hidden. Your face was <laughs> hidden under you're good. that. Yeah, it's my mic protection. Yeah. Um, I was just saying, I, I think something that you could do is maybe have a bit more of a than 48 hours between wars. I, I think that that used to be okay for two week wars, but I think the skirmish mode is more than enough time to keep players engaged enough or the fight clubs are engaged enough to keep players engaged, but maybe give us like three or maybe even four days between wars. Cause these wars are not two week, one week wars. These are like, 30 consecutive days, 30 to 50 consecutive days of the same shit. Like, let me, let me give you one more thing that you just mentioned. It's your fault. I would not do it, but it's your fault. No, you said ahead. it. Uh, one thing for a resistance phase that I would like to see. Magic boxes. Hmm. Yeah, no, that'd be great for people to learn how to do stuff and build stuff, and I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, by the it, way, it time out. The amount of time can I, can I interrupt you for a second? Making. I'm not trying to say that. Like, I'm planning on this to be like a two-hour thing. So I was just saying we're like at the halfway point, and we were still on question one. We can even go back to question one. I was just saying I wanted to get another. <laughs> I wanted to get another question in. You know what I'm saying? I, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, but I a hundred percent agree with that weird. I think that I, I'm, I'm trying to be everything neutral specific right now, but I, I, I definitely feel for both sides. It would be only healthy. Like, I don't think after a 50 day war, someone's like, I got to get on to date. Like, I don't think anyone's like that, man. I don't like, I think people are like, thank fuck. I can sleep tomorrow. Like, Oh my God. Like I don't have no M subs. I don't have to go bayonet 30 kids in a row. Like, I, you know, I think a smaller break, uh, stone, I think a bigger break would be, um, very helpful and healthy. Um, that also being said, I'm just going to message on Steam real quick. Oh, you remember that guy we played Helldivers with? He just invited me. That was funny. The random that joined. Nah, okay. Sorry. Uh, that was a little off topic. Sorry. I'll have to edit that out. Um, that being said, um, I, Goob, I somewhat agree with you um, when you say the fences are frail. But I mean, here's the deal. I we're starting to get into where I have to like be a little bit more precise on how I sway and say things. Um, again, and just for any of the viewers, I, I want to be flat out honest and tell you, I am a colonial. I've only played colonial, but I want to be as non-biased as I can. I like, and I mean that wholeheartedly. Um, before I say anything further, I don't mean to offend anyone and I don't mean to come off as a biased player. I want to know want you to know my background is I'm a bone uh, leader, a bone regiment leader. I play colonials only, but that being said, I care more about the game uh, balance and development more than me being biased. Like I'm not biased at all. Um, I think about these issues and talk about these things to many people that are in the chat and someone in the call right now. I talk about balance all the time. Um, <laughs> that being said, um, I think something that needs to be addressed is the PVE and the player bases. And this is something the devs can't fix. This is a community thing, guys. But people talk all the time about, you know, Especially on the collies. Like, I, I hate to say it, and I know it happens with the Wardens, too. You go in, you have an amazing op, you take three or four places. When you go to bed, that shit ain't going to be there tomorrow, Chief. I promise you that. You know, that's both sides. That's that's a both sides thing. Um, that being said, 
I think one side right now is building back a lot better and a lot more aggressively. And I think, to be fair, that has something to do with how the facilities are being done right now. Um, I do want to talk about facility work in this um, podcast as well as we're kind of getting to the landing section of this. Hold on, Beard. I know that. Hold back, Tiger. Hold back. Um, That being said, um, one thing I do want to address, and I would love to hear people's opinions on this, and I want to talk to Beard about this. Um, personally right now, I think that one side has to do a lot more facility work and that's why I think you're seeing Virid, um, there are so many more facilities is a people have trust issues. We all know that in this game, B people like to be individuals and don't like to play as a team. And three, we don't have, I don't want to call a name out, so I won't. We don't have a big regiment helping little regiments out and like kind of dictating, um, which on one side of the ball there is. And what I mean by that is I I don't want to call out names, but I know like I I won't. I'm not going to call out names. I'm going to stay in that now. There are clans on the, and I'll say the wardens, that come in and have superior leadership come in and say, this needs to happen, do it. And I don't feel like that's... Interruption. Go ahead. Interruption. It's not a regiment. Uh, it's collection of regiments. And so coalition. Actually, only. since I... So, um, it is not, it's not a coalition. It's basically, you have uh, on Warden side, again, we played last two wars on Warden side. Uh, we are now playing as colonials. Uh, and we were actually entangled uh, in close cooperation with a lot of big regiments that are actually on Warden side. So KRGG, FMAT, 82DK, 11E, so on and so forth. We worked with all of them. And basically, uh, important stuff, for example, important choke point. You have basically Wardens just building signs uh, signposts, regular signposts, nothing special, saying this is a no-build zone area, vacate from here, do whatever you want, wherever, somewhere in the back line, but here we are building only bunkers. For example, Marban, uh, the moment it was uh, hexes in the front, uh, hexes in front of Mar- uh, Marban's hollow, uh, when they were attacked Marban Hollow was actually declared as hex that will be next front line, and all of the facilities were supposed to be deleted unless they were ammo factories. Everything else need to, needed to be vacated from that place. Okay, can I can and I intervene? That's here? actually what happened. I, I think I think I just need to address this the way I want to address this, and I can't sugarcoat it for anyone's feelings. Rathian here. What's better? Five armies or one? That's how it's working right now. You have all these big regiments. I won't even name names again. I still won't. Because I don't want to call anyone out. I have to be unbiased as whatever. Collies right now work as a PMC faction. A bunch of small groups that do small operations that all kind of... I kind of want to work with you, but really, if you don't do what I do, fuck you. And it's it's my PMC faction, your PMC faction, and we're fighting this army. Via the wardens are like, listen, we don't care about your feelings. Get the fuck out of this hex, and we're taking all of it. We're going to win this, and then we'll give you land in the back. Like, it, it's a very simple thing. And I, I mean it when I say it. And this happens, and if you don't agree with me, you can look it up. The big regiments on the wardens come in and say, vacate, just as you said. People listen because they have the majority. The big clan comes in and says, move. This is for the betterment of our war. They listen. On the colonials, what happens is big clan comes in and says, hey, move. This is big shit important. We need this area. Fuck you. We're going to have a civil war. Fight. Then both sides are fighting each other instead of fighting the wardens. That is a community issue. 
Now, why is this happening? This is the question I've asked myself. And the only logical thing I've come to is maybe that war or that faction has heard that wardens are like that and are very structured as big clan eats little clan but helps little clan out that's the thing everyone always leaves out on the colonials big clan tells little clan to fuck off the thing that wasn't said is they gave him a fucking bt for doing it or whatever the case may be they helped him out that also being said they did tell him to move and the little guy moved when that happens on the colonials i have very many specific things saying hey we're gonna take this we need this for our area. It starts a civil war and then sigil gets involved and then it becomes a big old hassle and then people fucking leave. And when I come back to this, what I'm trying to get at is people hear that wardens are very, um, they come off very blunt and rude when they're really trying to do what's best for the war. Then they come over to the collies uh, and want to play individual. They want to play as an individual faction they want or an individual regiment. They want to kind of do their own fucking thing. And so it's kind of started to become the colonials aren't working together because it, like I said, we're running it as like a, a PMC organization that gets contracted out to do certain jobs via the wardens are like, we need this regiment to cover this area. Please you cover this area and they have it down more pat. I don't take away from the wardens. They work their ass off and they're very organized. But the fact being is, when they tell that little clan to fuck off, man, like, where do they go next war? If they don't agree with what HUDK or these big so, clans said, what do they do? They come to the Colonial. And then we have the little regiment that does that. So, go ahead. I, I want to, like... So, let me just give you... Let me just give you a bit of explanation. Uh, there was... Um, a discussion about it on reddit a while ago as it turns out at the moment uh, wardens are actually the faction for veteran players and colonials are tutorial for the game unfortunately that's the situation currently i can't argue and i guys I, again i'm not trying to jump down the rabbit hole i'm not trying to like fix the community i'm not trying but what I am trying to say is, like, I want it to be more evenly based, and I want there to be an understanding of why the Colonials are doing what they are. That being said, I, I think that what we just said, a community issue, that's community problem. What was just said. That's not fixable by the devs. Yeah. But what... Exactly. Uh Right. This has to be done by community. Um, I'm sorry for interrupting. This has to be done by, by community uh, and by, uh, when I say by community, basically players need to help out new players, new people. Big regiments need to help small regiments, but also small regiments need to have a bit of understanding and also solo players need to have understanding why big regiments are doing stuff that they are doing i mean you know that i'm not sure which war it was but it was a long time ago uh you contacted me and told me hey i want a bt and i was like okay give me a second to check whose bt is which one and i actually did give you a bt and i didn't ask for any payment i said okay take it out go have fun in case you lose it, we'll talk about payment. But if you return it, you don't have to pay me anything. Was it not like that? Yeah, and I, I brought it back. Full fueled, full ammo. Vundava, I had a great night in the tank. We took some town halls. Brought it back. And that's, that's the way it should be. And, again, it's, again, it's a community issue. And I, I'm really kind of rip into the wardens here from my understanding if you guys really want to be faction loyalists that's fine i understand i'm a colonial faction loyalist but i'm telling you if you guys all veteran stack and keep pummeling the shit out of the new players and like always go warden you're gonna kill the fucking player base and i'm not meaning it as like i'm a doomsday like you guys are killing the fucking game. But what I am saying is like, maybe we need to look at, 
That's I'm, I'm put myself in a fucking predicament here. How can we, uh, let me, uh, let me revert what I just said. How can we as a community even out the player base? How, how, that's the real, how, how do we do that? Yeah. I really don't have a solution because uh, the problem currently is that wardens are willing to work with people a lot more, but they require you to understand what uh, what they are asking you for you actually to know why they are asking that. While on the colonial side, you can just say, uh, go to dot, 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 and people will actually turn away and stop trying to do whatever because we all know that things are not going to go in anybody's favor. I mean, I am, again, as I'm saying, uh, I am member of WLL, which is one of the bigger regiments of colonial side, and we are not able to push a regiment of three people out of, let's say, coal field so we can make facilities, so we can make BTs for everybody. We are not able to do that because it's, well, other regiments are showing up and telling, hey, they were the first, it's their field. All right, I'm going to take this before I say what I'm about to say next. Salute. Mm, that's really good. Ooh, okay, I'm awake. Okay. I'm going to say the tough, tough talk now. Very tough talk. One thing that can be done in the community to fix a lot of shit is clean that fucking Reddit page up. We need to stop as a community both sides. It's a competitive game. I get it. But we are killing the community via Reddit. That is a cesspool of people that are one-sided and will not look at the other direction with any legitimacy. Like, ego checks need to be done. We need to clean that shit up. But this is the biggest thing. And I don't want to go into it, Veer, but I'm about to. What is enticing players to go warden or colonial? What what's the selling points right now? Because it's either you could be like us and say you just like the aesthetic of the colonials or the wardens better. But what do you do usually before you buy a new game? You go research it, you study it. What's everyone saying right now in the Reddit posts, on the Steam page, all this shit? I wouldn't play the game if I researched the Reddit post first. I'll say it like that. I wouldn't buy it. Yep. Yep. I would not as well. Uh, I bought it because a couple of my friends wanted to try it out and they actually left. Uh, they are not playing anymore. I actually met, uh, that was Panda, the red Panda pirate. I met him. He was shoveling in Westmarch as always, as every war, uh, when we are actually playing colonials and it's North versus South. I met him, I started talking to him, and that's how I joined WLL, and I'm still playing. That was a long time ago, but again, at the moment, if you take a look on Steam reviews, if you take a look at Reddit, it's just a lot of hate, a lot of, well, uh, whining, and I don't want to say anything else about it, but the state is bad. So... With that being said, I would ask you if we can actually jump to next point. Yeah, no, that's that's good. This one is kind of this one this one is actually kind of taking us to slippery slope, and I don't think that there will be no good things out uh, of it. hundred percent, and I think that's all I needed to say on it is what I said. That being said, the next point that I have down. <sighs> what ideas do you have for the game that would not set one side on top of the other, but would balance the game out a little better? 
be this vehicle variants, be this armor, be this arty, be this rockets, be anything. What do you think can be improved to balance the game out a little bit more solidly? And I guess I'll add this on the top of it as a little cherry on top. Is the game balanced in the state that it's in? Uh, honestly, I don't think it is, especially in late game. Uh, okay, uh, early game, mid game, uh, late game, uh, those three stages, actually there are four stages, but let's say uh, three stages, which is early game, mid game and end game, are basically balancing stuff out relatively. Early game, uh, colonials have upper hand, mid game wardens have upper hand and then late game uh, it kind of balances out but unfortunately i think that wardens still have upper hand however end game which is when you have super weapons uh, it's balanced out in a sense um, wardens do get two versions of bt and a super heavy tank Colonials get two versions of, well, one version of BT, BTD, and the Super Heavy. Um, super Heavies, Warden is actually, Warden Super Heavy is actually useful. It's a good one. Colonial Super Heavy is, honestly, in my honest opinion, a uh, waste of resources. Every, because it requires every... a lot of people to crew and... It also requires a lot of good communication, a lot of synchronization. For that reason, I think that that's why only, that's the only reason why I think in that super heavy battle or end game battle, super weapon battle, why wardens have a bit of upper hand. In end game, I think wardens have upper hand uh, for one reason. And that is the mobility of colonial tanks if we exclude, in this point, uh, Felchon and Spata buff. But everything else, uh, Bardish, uh, every other tank that you can imagine, I think Wardens are winning uh, just because of mobility statistics. Um, I, I think you're right, and I think um, one of the biggest points... Um, that I, I like to bring out a lot is um, I, I think the Warden MPF is really strong. I think if you were to put out um, a full MPF of Silver Hands versus a full MPF of Falchions, no facilities whatsoever, you're going to see what wins. You put a full MPF of Outlaws versus a full MPF of Falchions, that's you can tee that up. I mean, honestly, I think the Falchion will probably compete at a very high level against Outlaws. Like, I think we pretty much have the upper hand. But when the Silver Hands get added in, um, you almost have to go to the facility to upgrade to Aspatha to duke out with that thing. And I think that is the only place where I'm like, I can't see. And if that's their advantage, Spike, like, like you said again, early game... I think we smash. I mean, all the way up until half tracks, I think it's call it game time. Um, that being said, um, I think when actual mainline tanks come out, the medium line tanks, I think we really struggle um, to meet the efficiency of the wardens in that regards. We have to have facilities. And you brought up a really good idea of bringing – the pads up forward and bringing using a train, but it's like, again, you were having to make a train, make a pad, upgrade that on the pad just for something that they would have to just drive up on a flatbed, shove it in a depot. Good to go again. But again, but again, uh, we are not in a symmetric game. This is a symmetric yep. game and differences should exist and have to exist so pay attention to that please however there should be some sort of balancing factor that's why i said if we take into consideration everything i think the only thing that should be changed is mobility for colonial tanks 
nothing else, only mobility. If we get speed, uh, higher speed and higher, uh, no, sorry, faster rotation uh, in both during movement and in spot, basically just pivoting, I think that would help a lot. I, I, I could really see that. And to be honest, I don't think the tanks are that, I, I, like I said, I don't think the tanks are that far off. I think it's really an overblown proportion like of the game. But um, the other issue I have is when tanks come out, it becomes World of Tanks. And that's also another issue that I think both sides face. And I think Colonials are kind of dumb for trying to meet their their strength with our kind of weak point, you know? I think it's just kind of tough. Um, I think it's tough to combat that at that level. Um, I, I just don't think we have the right rhyme and rhythm. I think we need to stop making as many facilities. And like you said, kind of get more of a have one facility in the back, kind of take care of everything. But that's a community problem. Thanks for the hydrate. Um, and again, I don't know how to solve that issue. That That's... These are things that community has to fix, not dev man. The things that we talked about earlier are all dev man fixes that are very small but could really make a huge impact. Um, but now we're starting to get into more community driven problems, I think. Um, maybe, like you said, slight dev yeah, man. As I said, so uh, we can give proposals to developers mm -hmm. and that's okay but community problems dev men should not be actually involved in those mm -hmm. they can give us tools to maybe do something about it one of the propositions for for example one of the proposals uh, that i had uh, uh, was basically for super weapons so that's bt btd so on and so forth those facility made uh, things place on the vehicle that was made just who made it just have a name produced by name of the person that made it so people who actually are in the facility they will invite the person hey come on over here you want to make you want us to make bt for you okay this will be your bt now click the button and in 16 hours you will get it that way if his BT gets taken by allies, but by other people, or gets stolen from the facility, or something stupid happens, like let's say I don't really want to use that, but let's use it. Alting happens, somebody takes it away, drives it away, and claims it's his. You can see it was made by that person, and he can take it back. Yeah, that's another really good. Um, speaking of that, um, another thing that I completely am shocked we forgot to address, another really cool idea, devs, for Christmas, can you please give me a facility garage I can stick my BT in, please, <laughs> dev made for my Christmas Let's present. That for... Let's leave that for next conversation. We are nearing two hours mark as you wanted it to be. Yeah. So I have a proposal that is nicely structured, full proposal for that. Yeah, um, I think for the first um, episode, guys, I think this is really good. Um, I'm really happy we got two hours worth of combo in. Um, I will be posting this on YouTube. Um, and the last thing, you know, for chat, Virid, anyone this is kind of where i want everyone to kind of chime in and um if there's any ending notes that you guys want to end on or maybe anything that you want to say before we end our first episode here um this is the time and if not uh i'll give you guys a few minutes to do that but um again seriously guys thank you for the support Virid. thank you for being my first guest on the on the um, podcast here and i really want to start doing this every week guys um I, re I really want to step up and I want to do better. Um, I know some convos in here, we got a little slippery on, you know, one side or the other, but all in all, I think this is what I want this podcast to be is an idea hub, a suggestion hub, and a spot where colonials and wardens can come to an agreement in the middle and just talk about stuff. 
you know, because we're all playing the game to have fun. And, you know, as much as the Wardens hate Collies and as much as Collies hate Wardens, I wouldn't fight anyone else. Did I say that wrong? Uh, trust me, it, it's uh, that, what, what you just said, uh, Wardens hate Collies, Collies hate Wardens, that's uh, just pumped out while you are on the front. Uh, believe me when I tell you, uh, we switched sides, went to uh, Warden's side, and we were basically welcomed like we were just taking a break. Yeah, for a and couple we of fucking wars. hated you every second, too, mother. No, <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said uh, it's just artificially pumped, yeah, nothing else. Know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're right, man. And I we're mean, all playing the same game to enjoy it. And, you know, I want that to be more what it's about. I love the the fake rivalry that we've bestowed upon ourselves. Um, that's really cool. And that's, that's something I really congratulate the devs on is creating real hate for virtual colors and names. Like, you guys made something, you know. Um, that being said, guys, again. Thank you. Um, I'm going to end this here. Um, Veer, do you have anything else to end on before I, I click that button? Uh, I have a list that's basically uncovered. We just went to three topics. I have like 15 more. But no, that's never good. Mind. We, we got more episodes. Some other. We got next week. <laughs> exactly. Um, again, guys, thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by. I'm going to end the stream now. Um, hope to see you guys next week. Bye-bye.